Greetings, peace and blessings. What a go on, what a go on, what a go on. Gonichiwa. Namaste. Yes, I are. See, si, bonjour. All these things. Greetings is what I'm trying to say. What's up, everybody? How y'all been? Phone Homie presents the slab. Make some noise. Let's go. Live from Washington, D.C. Live from Washington, D.C. Live in Washington, D.C. Watch this. Ow. See, that was live. I think we had. Oh, that really there hurt. we go. That really there hurt. we go. What's up? Word up. What's going on? It's DJ Sandman once again in the What's building. What's going on, man? Hey, another day, man. Hey, you better slow down, man. I think you're trying <laughs> to take my job. Nah, man. You know what it is. It's all up, man. <laughs> <laughs> huh. <laughs> welcome man welcome welcome to live studio audience welcome to everybody tuning in at home welcome from the past anybody's going to tune in in the future welcome from the future anybody that's tuning in live from the west coast we are definitely time or the walking. central t- time zones or hawaii wherever you might be tuning in from phone home presents a slab hour welcome aloha so here at the show if this is your first time joining us, we like to uh, celebrate the cannabis culture, especially the one that we've been building here right in D.C., the I-71 movement that's, uh, that took place a few years ago, and there's been a lot of progression and uh, regression at the same time um, within the culture. So we're going to get into all of that today. We've got a fantastic show lined up for y'all today, because guess what? Y'all about to get the real today. Y'all about to get the real today. Uh, we got a couple of topics to discuss of course as always we're gonna try and um go against everything that that reefer madness has uh poisoned your mind with and show you that this is a productive culture we are not the lazy stoners that you may see uh have seen on those commercials with uh chips all on their belly and (laughs) running stimpy on repeat in the background (laughs) talking about mom we're all out of juice i said no ice (laughs) <laughs> I said no ice. Better not have no brothers. Nah, man. We out here. We're grinding. We're moving. We created a movement here with the Slab Hour. Big shout out to Phone Homie. Without you, the Slab Hour wouldn't be here. Uh, Phone Homie presents the Slab Hour live and direct every Sunday from 9 to 10. WLVSradio.com. ListenVisionLive.com. Yeah, that's a vibe. It's a yeah, whole. It's, it's a vibe, man. It's a whole it's a vibe. vibe, man. This is what we're doing here in DC. This is what we're doing here in DC. We're educating the masses. We're educating the masses. This is not your grandmother's uh, reefer. Reefer marijuana's. Okay. That was okay, cabbage. Sonny. This is not the marijuana. What are we doing here? Is this is this is cannabis? This is medical, recreational, CBD oils, THC. Industrial hemp. We're changing the way the world views it. We're turning, the, taking that 710, that 420 stigma, taking that frown, we turn it upside down, showing you this is a productive culture, and we do this. If you are lazy at home, then you in a place that I want to be because there's a lot to be done out here. So, um, you know, take a sip of your medicine or your uh, for farm recreation, and um, you know, keep it moving, keep it moving. DJ Sandman, what up, baby? How things in your side of the world, my brother? Man, hey, can't keep a brother down. You know what it is, man. Yeah, they try, though, man. They try. Hey, you know what? You know what? Much love to the people who try, but you know what? That just fuels the fire, and we just keep it going, you know? Yeah, it's to crazy. To the moon, to the moon, you, you know and beyond. What? You know what? Uh, while we appreciate the enthusiasm, please keep it down. It is a live show, but you know what they say? A fire that uh, that gets flamed can turn into an inferno. And that inferno will consume and consume until the flame has petered out. I like that. I like Bars! That. <laughs> I feel like I should have paid for that. Right, right. Oh, <laughs> that should come with like three people fainting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know right. what I'm saying? But I just, it is what it is, man. Yeah, man. But uh, we, we here. We having fun. Um, we navigating. We moving. Um, before we go any further. Phone homie, what up? Before we go any further. Yes, absolutely. Let's uh, give a shout out to Phone Homie. Uh, internationally traveling, we miss you, my brother. Uh, safe travels out there. Um, we uh, we we keeping it calm over here, uh, so that you know things aren't uh, chaos in a couple of weeks, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we need some uh, a little bit of order 
to be restored and a little bit of um, calm to be uh, brought back to the district. Uh, this is an interesting time in our, in our, in our nation's history. Uh, we are literally navigating unchartered space. Uh, this is a new frontier. Um, not that Space Force frontier. Not that Space Force new frontier. I got a letter right. about that. Is that you right? got a letter? I got a letter. You getting recruited? Yeah, I got it. I am. I am offended. I got, I got reported. I got a guy report there, man. Like you two days. To space yeah. Force. <laughs> space Force. Yeah. Or risk intergalactic jail. They say bring backwards. So I don't know if it's the bring same backwards. one we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's the same one, but yeah. it probably is. Probably is. Um, but yeah, peace the phone, homie. Um, out there internationally traveling. Uh, DJ Sam, if we can get into that slab minute, I think it's only appropriate that we uh we set the vibes properly. Yeah. By um, saying peace to Chris Crazy in the slab minute. This is a, the the theme song of the slab hour. We do this every time, every single time. <laughs> we Gucci that. Also, peace to Mini Nail, longtime sponsors of the show. Mini Nail is always the correct answer. Peace to Chewbacca. He brought nugs to the sesh. I said chill. You know, we doing we doing uh, dabs today, but you know, he wanted to represent for what he had going on. I think it's like the purple, some purple something, it's some inner lab. Uh, but yeah, we got that slab minute coming up. Absolutely, it's coming up. Yeah, man, look, technical difficulties, man, the uh, DJ and Predator training. But today, we gonna, last week I did a little light. I took a little light and I cheated you at home and i cheated myself um so today we're gonna do it correct and i'm gonna try i'm gonna attempt to do phone homie proud what was that what was it? slap dab no <laughs> yeah i gotta i gotta be able to talk after this Track 304. You know what 304 upside down is? How? Slab, how? So track 304 is a slab minute. Here we go. DJ Sandman, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-oh. I think that's it. If you know the words, sing along at home. Yo, crank that up, DJ yeah, Sir. Yeah. The turf are blowing just like E.T.'s finger. The goddamn dad bass gon' linger. So demaculate. Like, like ho, homie. I'm Chris Crazy if you don't know me. You punk motherfucker, yeah, I'm turfed out. I heard turf saucy out the girl's mouth. Where the pretty bitches, the ones with freckles. And that B.H.O. there got speckles. That's poop soup. Listen to me, that shatter right there, don't listen to me. I'm cool, bro. I'ma watch the slab hour and chill out for a dab hour. Motherfucker and twax everything. Married to the turfs, don't you see the wedding ring? From Tacoma, the one with the K. And you know we squash rosin all day. Bitch, I'm on it, on it. Twax in this here marijuana. Bitch, I'm on it. Wax in this marijuana. Welcome to the Welcome slab, to the slab hour. hour. Brown banana eating bitch. <laughs> oh yeah. Yummy. Yeah, that was, that smelled delicious. Yes, I am. More fire, huh? So anyway. Hey, by the way. Peace to Bangladesh. I feel like Bangladesh is always on the check-in. Whenever we check the stats, Bangladesh and South Korea is like uh, number three and four. So what up, South Korea? So, all right, so. <coughs> thank you, Chris Crazy, for the slab minute. Now, <coughs> for all y'all in California, if that whole CBD situation is is resolved? Is that is it resolved? Just California. Okay, California. 
You can get 10% off of all your CBD needs on peaceoillife.com. Peaceoillife.com. With the code, punch it in, phone CBD. Okay, you got it? Phone CBD at peaceoillife.com. 10% off CBD in California only because the laws are always changing. And right now, it's probably just best if you just live in California, you know, <laughs> unless you really need it. If you need it, then yeah, yeah. You know, make it do what it do, baby. All right, so uh, events. We're going to go straight into the events. we got a uh, busy show um, tonight. We've got a couple of uh, DC brands who have come to discuss uh, recent events um, within the uh, DC cannabis community. Um, we're going to get into that later after we get into the events and news. So we're going to get into the events. Tacoma Wellness Center is now open seven days a week. They're open from 1 to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. Find out their menu and other information about them on their website, TacomaWellness.com, or visit their Instagram at Tacoma Wellness. Stay lit and stay fit. All right, every Sunday from 10 to 11 a.m. at the 420 Cardio Sesh. Created by 420 After Fitness, this event is based on an Instagram hashtag and has gained in tr trendiness over the years. I think at this point, we all know that the trending, that the hashtag, right, is hashtag stay lit, stay fit. Stay lit, stay fit. Stay lit, stay fit. Hashtag stay lit, stay fit uh, for the active cannabis user. Uh, every Sunday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., there's an open invite for the whole DMV area. And if you're feeling really froggy, you can jump all the way from Pennsylvania or Delaware to come through. And uh, the CannaFit community join us at, as one. All fitness levels are welcome to participate. They do all kinds of workouts, high-intensity interval training, plyometrics, calisthenics, and much, much more. Always mixing it up with their main goal to burn fat and have fun doing it. They are sponsored by local brands, which allows them to give... A free gift at pre-workout. A free gift. And then you get to work out. I'm trying to work on my core, man. Work, yeah, work <laughs> in the core. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Got to get my core situated. The, you know? the slab dance. Oh, you can keep up with the movement by adding at DMV underscore cardio underscore sesh or its creator at 420 after fitness. And don't forget to use the hashtag, which started it all. Hashtag stay lit, stay fit. There will be different locations each week, and as the team builds, the activities will be different, all right? On, Sat on September 14th, check out the 29th annual Boston Freedom Rally. What's going on with the tunes, man? Oh, DJ Sandman. Smackvision.com. I was like, yo, I know my voice is melodic, <laughs> but it's something missing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right? Yeah, there we go. Uh -oh. Okay, the 29th annual, that, that feels better, right? It just feels better, right? All right, the 29th annual Boston Freedom Rally. Enjoy three days of cannabis revolution on the historic Boston Common. There'll be two stages of speakers and musicians, cannabis-themed vendors, and lots of munchies. Food. There'll be lots and lots of food. For the more Instagram, visit them at the masscan.org. M-A-S-S-C-A-N-N. Dot org or on their Instagram at masscan.org. Yeah. So in news, Boston Freedom Rally. Boston, from what I hear, every year it's a three-day event, right? This is what I'm. This is what I'm hearing. And every year, this three-day event is just nothing but uh, music, vibes, culture, and uh, cannabis. Uh, activities, you know what I'm saying? Litness, so it's, it's 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 a beautiful thing going on in Massachusetts. So I'm gonna say big shout. That's not a small thing that's going on Absolutely. in Boston. In Boston, all right. That's September 14th. It's 29th annual. I gotta right. mark that on my calendar. Mark it on the calendar. <laughs> for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the show, I will be doing it. Sans hat <laughs> for the ladies. <laughs> all right. So in news. Arkansas, yes. And on my Instagram. Line. <laughs> Peace. Okay, Arkansas Supreme Court clears medical cannabis program blockade. 
In a major ruling for Arkansas's medical cannabis program, the state Supreme Court threw out a ruling that effectively blocked Arkansas's five approved cultivators from receiving licenses. Thursday's Supreme Court decision should put an end to months of legal challenges from the losing applicants who argued the licensing process was unfair. And patients are hoping it means that Arkansas's program can finally launch. As recent as February, things were looking up for the nearly 5,500 registered medical cannabis patients in Arkansas. After nearly 18 months of failing to license any cultivators, 18 months, the Arkansas Medical Marijuana Commission announced it was rewarding five out of nearly 100 applicants, applicants' permits to start growing. To start, you know what I'm saying? You gotta start somewhere. Five out of 100 ain't bad. At that time, it's not good either. It seemed that medical cannabis products would be available in approved dispensaries as early as mid-summer. However, shortly after the successful applicants were announced, losing applicants launched a volley of legal challenges against Arkansas. They argued that the commission had not reviewed applications fairly or accurately. Can you imagine something in Arkansas not happening fairly or accurately? <laughs> Can you imagine that? Right. That is not... Protocol, right? Yeah. That just blew my mind. I can't even. Anyway, that was, that was sarcasm. They argued that the commission had not reviewed applications fairly or accurately. They also claimed that it had awarded licenses to growers with connections to the licensing board. Challenges, challenges like these are not uncommon, but in Arkansas, they face tougher odds. A prior Supreme Court ruling established a precedent for reaffirming the state's constitutional principle of sovereign immunity. In short, you can't sue Arkansas and its state agencies. Courts threw out several appears, appeals from rejected applicants, but one company's case ended up being heard in front of a county judge who found its arguments convincing. Pulaski County Judge Wendell Griffin presided over a case brought against the state's cannabis commission by rejected applicant Naturalis Health LLC. Ultimately, Griffin ruled in favor of Naturalis Health, finding several aspects of the application and review process unconstitutional. The review process created the appearance of bias in violation of due process of law. Griffin wrote in his decision, those biases included favoring applications who had pre-existing relationships with the commission, which neglected to research the tax histories to the, of those applicants, or even their facilities were required proper distance from schools and churches. So it's like all their boys jumped in. So, so surprise, surprise, the good old boy network in Arkansas was working and they were building facilities. Sounds like close to schools and churches. In his ruling, Griffin placed an injunction against the commission, preventing it from awarding licenses to the five appointed cultivators. Thursday's Supreme Court ruling removed that obstacle, clearing the way for the state's program to launch. After Griffin's ruling, Arkansas appealed, taking the case all the way to the state Supreme Court. They were that pressed. We're going, we're going to keep going. The Supreme Court fast-tracked the case and began hearing arguments in early June. It didn't take long for the court to reach its decision, which vacated the injunction against the Medical Marijuana Commission and dismissed Griffin's ruling that the review process was unconstitutional. The Supreme Court found that Griffin simply did not have the jurisdiction as a county judge to halt the state's medical cannabis program. That means Arkansas's medical cannabis patients are closer to their medicine than they have ever been. One step closer, Arkansas. One step closer. All it takes is for Bill Clinton to go back. <laughs> and spark a J. Spark a J right on That's the state. That's all it takes, right? Right on the state capitol steps. They're like, I approve this message. That was actually pretty good. <laughs> for free, man. <laughs> Slab hour. Hey, wait till the homie gets back. If you like me, you going to love him. If this is your first time here. She, you ain't seen nothing yet. Right, Sam, man? Oh, yeah. I think yeah. you're doing a pretty good job, though. I'm doing a fantastic job. Super fantastic. Bill introduced to allow cannabis in public housing in legal states. Bill introduced to allow cannabis in public housing in legal states. Representative Eleanor. Well, hold on. I can't just say representative. She's like, oh. Um, Everybody's godmother, right? <laughs> yeah. Auntie. Everybody's auntie. Yeah. Everybody's auntie. 
You know what I'm saying? Everybody's favorite play cousin. Yep. Everybody's the Oracle. Representative Eleanor Holmes Norton has introduced a bill in Congress that will allow cannabis in public housing in states with legalized cannabis. Current regulations forbid all forms of cannabis, including medical cannabis, in all federally assisted housing. Norton's bill, House Resolution 6152, would apply to the residents of both public housing and those in the Section 8 housing program. Bop. Norton signed the bill at a ceremony in her Washington, D.C. office on Tuesday. It's fresh off the presses, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-huh. Fresh off the presses, ladies and gentlemen. Slab out. Signed on Tuesday. Also, this at this also at the ceremony was Sandra Battle, a resident of the District of Columbia and a medical cannabis patient. Battle lives in assisted housing and uses medically prescribed cannabis to treat fibromyalgia. While battle, with battle, were friend of the show, Adam Eidinger and Nicholas Schiller, who together founded cannabis advocacy group DCMJ. During the signing event, Norton announced that she would honor battle in the title of this bill. In a press release, she also expressed gratitude to her guests for bringing the issue to her attention. I thank Sandra, Sandra Battle and our DCMJ advocates for joining me to mark the introduction of what I am calling the Sandra Battle Cannabis Fair Use Act, Norton said. Residents like Sandra should not fear eviction from federally assisted housing simply for using cannabis to treat their medical conditions. Our bill recognized today's realities and proven needs. Individuals who live in states where medical and or recreational cannabis is legal but live in federally assisted housing should have the same access to treatment as their neighbors. Under current regulations, users of drugs that are illegal under federal law are not eligible for public housing assistance. Goal! The prohibition included medicinal and recreational cannabis that is legal under state law. Landlords can also evict residents receiving public assistance for using legal cannabis. If, Norton bills, if Norton's bill becomes law in states with legalized recreational or medical cannabis, a person could not be denied federally assisted housing for using cannabis. Instead, the same rules that apply to the smoking of tobacco would apply to smoking cannabis. Norton also used the signing ceremony to recognize cannabis advocates Eidinger and Schiller of DCMJ. They told Norton about residents like Battle and suggested the legislative fix. Eidinger and Schiller founded DCMJ in early 2013 as a campaign to change the District of Columbia's outdated cannabis laws. And we appreciate y'all. Later that year, the group transitioned into the DC Cannabis Campaign to join the push to pass ballot initiative 71. Voters passed the initiative in November 2014, legalizing the possession of up to two ounces of cannabis. Ballot initiative 71 also legalized the personal cultivation of up to three cannabis plants. That's not accurate. That's not accurate. Ballot Initiative 71 legalized the personal cultivation up to three mature cannabis plants, flowering cannabis plants, and three vegetables. Okay, so that's six. And that's per per resident. That's per resident. So if you're if you're in a a two bedroom apartment and here we go. Appreciate you, Sam, man. He wants all the credit. Appreciate you, brother. I was, appreciate I was you all. all. Like the universe all. Appreciate you all. You know what I mean? Trying Manifested to get my, the my whole life together right you now. You feel me. <laughs> You'll get it. Uh, here we go. So, um, yeah, three cannabis, three mature budding cannabis plants. After the passage of Ballot Initiative 71, the D.C. Cannabis Campaign reverted back to DCMJ in 2015. Group Now fights for equal rights for cannabis users, growers, 
and their families in the District of Columbia. In a 2017 op-ed for the Washington Post, Eidegger noted that many DC residents who could not enjoy the protections of ballot initiative 71. With, with public consumption and cannabis social clubs both banned, many had no alternative for legal use. So even after legalizing cannabis in the district, the 20,000 residents whose landlord is the federal government are stuck living under draconian drug war policing and don't have a safe place to smoke or medicate in or out of their own homes, he wrote. Norton introduced House Resolution 6152 in the House of Representatives on June 19th. The bill was then referred to the House Committee on Financial Services for consideration. So June 19th, that's, that was this past week. Um, that's a few days ago. So uh, it's, still, it's still moving, it's still moving. Uh, call into your representatives, man. Get, get some energy behind that. Um, House Resolution 6152 in the House of, Rep in the House of Representatives. So check that out. Uh, highlight your people if you can do that. Before we go any further, I just want to shout out a couple of, uh, you know, fam family, like extended cousins to the to the slab hour. Um, one being on Tuesday night, every Tuesday night, uh, Phone Homie presents Talking Terps with District Dabbers at 9 p.m. Um, that's with uh, with your boy, my boy. If you know him, holla at your koala. You love him, holla at your koala. You heard? I'm practicing, man. I'll be practicing yeah, in the mirror. Yeah, you're gonna get it. Man. I'm gonna it's, get it. It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> it's scary. It's close, right? It's like, like you face thought you <laughs> And then every Saturday, every Saturday, McCleaves Mark, real deal farms. McCleaves Mark, where they uh, merge the wrestling world. With the cannabis world, and um, they really talk wrestling, video games. Um, it's uh, it's rambunctious, man. It's rambunctious and it's out of control. Rambunctious. But check them out. And uh, Stoner for the people. Okay, position for the people. Yeah, Stoner for the people. From what I understand, Stoner for the people every Friday, 9 p.m. until I'm told different. But physician for the people. Also, shout out to. It's at 8 o'clock on Fridays. Physician for the People, Stoner for the People. Check them out. All here on WLVSRadio.com. Okay, we're going to get through this news a little bit. And then get into some videos. How y'all feeling out there? Y'all feeling all right? It's getting a little hazy in here this, in the studio. It's hard. I'm having a hard time seeing everybody. Yeah, man. But uh, cannabis bill supported by Trump going nowhere fast in Congress. The cannabis bill supported by President Fuck you. Does not appear to have much traction with lawmakers. So far, congressional leaders have failed to back the Strengthening the Tenth Amendment through Entrusting States Act. That sounds scary. That sounds scary. Senator Cory Gardner and Senator Elizabeth Warren. That last edit was scary, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will you put that back up? Make America. Make America high as. There it is. There it is. All right. So the cannabis bill, um, Senator Cory Gardner and Elizabeth Warren introduced the bill in the Senate on June 7th. Then the following day, Trump's told supporters and reporters that he would probably support the States Act, as the bill is also known. Two months earlier, Gardner announced that he and the president had come to the agreement about cannabis and states' rights, ending an impasse over judicial nominees. But despite the support from Trump for the bipartisan bill, key congressional leaders have not yet backed it. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer said that he supports the decriminalization of cannabis. But a spokesperson told BuzzFeed in an email that the senator has, hasn't endorsed, endorsed the States Act. Schumer hasn't taken a position on this bill, the spokesperson said. The Republican chairs of key congressional committees have also not yet backed the state's act. Senator Chuck Grazley is the chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee, which would have to approve the bill before it could make it to the vote by the full Senate. An aide to the committee said that Grassley has no plans to entertain cannabis legalization bills. Senator Grassley is not planning on or, recon or considering hearings on any cannabis related legislation at the moment, the aide said. This is like um, the Star Wars credits. Just keeps going. 
going you know something fire is going to be on the end of, on the end of it but we got we going to make it through it y'all the Senate Judiciary Committee's ranking Democrat, Senator Dianne Feinstein, has said she supports the bill, but without the support of Republicans, the state's act seems doomed in the Senate. A similar fate appears probable in the House of Representatives. House Minority, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi favors the bill, according to a spokesperson. Leader Pelosi strongly supports this bipartisan legislation and hopes that it will continue to gain momentum, a spokesperson said. But Representative Bob Goodlatte, it sounds like it should be a drink at Starbucks. <laughs> Yo, can I have a half shot of you know, Bob Goodlatte? The chair of the House Judiciary Committee and a Republican from Virginia Pause. has. <laughs> hey, don't steal that, Starbucks. Keep it funky, man. Holla at me. All right, so um, it's, uh, the chair of the House Judiciary Committee and a Republican from Virginia has not scheduled any meetings or hearings about the state's act, according to the committee aide. No committee action is planned at this time, the aide said. Without the backing of key Republicans, the bill has little chances of advancing any further. If the bill somehow garnered the support it needs to become law, it would be a major change to federal cannabis regulation. The bill allows the states to set their own cannabis regulations and amend the Controlled Substances Act to exclude cannabis activity conducted in accordance with state laws. The bill would also legalize industrial hemp and protect and protect banks that do business with cannabis firms. Aha! Aha! I'm surprised all um, the Republicans haven't jumped on this quicker. You know what I'm saying? Um, they're trying to protect banks, man. They're trying to make money. Mason. Vert, a spokesperson for Washington, D.C. advocate group, the Marijuana Policy Project, told High Times that despite the lack of progress, the state's act still has a chance of success. Support for ending cannabis prohibition is stronger than ever and growing fast among members of Congress, Vert said. While the Judiciary Committee's chair's statements are disappointing, it's promising to see members like Senator Dianne Feinstein, who fought reform efforts for years, come out in support now. We expect the debate will continue and support will expand further on both sides of the aisle over the next six months. Given the president's comments and the trajectory of public and congressional support, it's certainly possible that we'll see some movement this year. That's that politician. It's certainly possible that we'll see some movement this year. It's also worth noting that the balance of power could shift after the, after the midterm elections, in which case there could be new committee leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the news, that is the events. Get active if you really uh, about this. Uh, if you really about this cannabis legalization, recreational, medicinal movement, so people can get their medicines, they can get their energies, they can get their vibes, their um, sacrament for all the rastas, uh, for any other religion that might use it. You know, it's uh, it's it's a. It I feel like it should be a fundamental right. You know, this is um from the earth, right? This is what we talking about, plants. We talking about herbs. We talking about plants. We talking about herbs. <laughs> Practice. When we in the game. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Piece of Canada dope. DC on the check in. Piece the phone, homie. Canada dope. What up? Piece to Trap Woods. What up, Chuck? Piece to uh, Capsidam University, the spaceship. Peace to Southeast Ratchet Cakes. Uh, peace to all the brands, all the um, elements uh, that's in this DC cannabis community that makes um, everything move. And you know, I know there's a lot of people hey, that I'm um, not it. saying, but, and you're gonna hear from a few of them um, in a few minutes. Um, but uh, in the meantime, let's cut to some videos. We got some videos. All right, let's get to some visuals. Tickle your mind, stimulate your mind's eye. Um, enjoy these. We'll be right back. Yeah, I know. 
in your neighbor's yard, rolled into harmless looking cigarettes, hidden in an innocent shoe or watch case. If you want a good smoke, try one of these. You will meet Bill, who once took pride in his strong will as he takes the first step toward enslavement. Of course, if you're afraid. destroying reaper they find a moment's pleasure but at a terrible price debauchery violence murder suicide and the ultimate end of the marijuana addict hopeless insanity All right, so a couple people have been asking me how this grinder works and you get the weed out. Well, it's it's really simple, honestly. You just kind of grind it up, and as you can see, we got the weed in there. You get your rolling papers over here, and you kind of just try to get as much as possible on the paper as you can. And there you go. You roll it up, and you got some leftovers for later. That's how that works. Not Not a big deal. Yeah. Did you get it? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Dude, she hit, she burned her. That was cool. That was calm. That was exciting. Yeah, man. Welcome back to Slab Hour. So, what we gonna do now is uh, we gonna open up a segment that we gonna be doing in uh, probably like monthly installments, depending on how the energy is. Uh, we gonna call this segment. We gonna call this segment. Say it loud. Say it loud. Get it? Chewy gets it. Say it loud. Say it loud. Chewy, Chewy always gets it. You're the only one that gets me, Chewy. You know that? 
Word up. So, uh, in Say it Loud, what we sounding off about today is uh, it's kind of what's been going on in the uh, the DC I-71 pop-up uh, community with the recent increase of activity uh, from law enforcement. There's been a lot of uh, miscommunication and a lot of mixed signals being sent back and forth. And uh, we're trying to clear it up. We're trying to clear it up. We we want there to be an understanding um, that, you know, this everybody in this community is compliant, I-71 compliant. We all are 21 and up in the in the venue. Everybody has two ounces on them. We're in there demonstrating goods and enjoying exchanges of of cannabis. It's a wonderful, magical marketplace, and and we we doing say it loud. We we doing say it loud. We gonna sound off about what's been going on in the DC Vanity community. So we have an open mic. The mic is open for anybody that wants to come up and you know talk about maybe their experience um, since the beginning of uh, this I-71 thing. The main difference that I've seen is that um, there are a lot of vendors who have come and go. There are a lot of businesses that have developed and brands that have been able to market themselves outside of their neighborhoods and been able to develop businesses behind their brands. I've seen, you know, stickers and t-shirts on IG from cats across the country of homegrown DC brands. And that's not normal, okay? That's not supposed to happen. That's not supposed to happen. You know, and uh, and it's all because of this uh, shared experience, the shared cannabis experience, and this community that we built around the cannabis plant, the sativa, the CBD, uh, industrial hemp. For those that like to get creative with your clothing and and uh, hats and accessories. Um, so uh, this is uh, these are the vendors, these are the brands, these are the businesses, these are the organizations that come to uh, the pop up events. And they uh, they demonstrate their goods, but uh, recently there's been a lot of um, let's say uh, negative energy moving through the the community. There's been a lot of um, crackdowns from uh, local law enforcement. Local law enforcement. Um, there's been a lot of crackdowns, and um, you know there needs to be some understanding um, between the community and the people that are being paid to protect and serve that community. So the people have voted, I-71, um, the people have voted, and they decided that this is what they want. And we're abiding by the uh, rules that have been given. Um, I feel, DJ A Boogie, uh, on behalf of the Slab Bar, I feel like a conversation should be opened up with uh, the DC Council um, there have been some pretty strong statements um, being released from a council member um, in regards to continuing the crackdown efforts on the DC cannabis community, the DC pop-ups specifically. Um, so I think a dialogue uh, could be opened up um, and you know maybe come to some understanding um, about the future and maybe some uh, actual laws that will create a little less of a gray area um, so we can't operate more in the light. You know, um, with that being said, uh, is anybody, you know, there's, is the mics open? Uh, feel free. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'm just gonna keep talking. So, um, so DC Council, uh, maybe we can get uh, DCMJ, uh, Adam Eidinger, maybe the DC Scrogger maybe a few influential uh, people in the community to, um, to, to keep up conversations. And uh, peace to DC Scruggle. 
one of the realest and most mysterious people I've ever, I've ever met. <laughs> what's up, Jay? <laughs> what's up, what's up, man? <laughs> chilling, man, chilling. Not Shout really, though. Shout out to Fawn Homie, man. Shout out to Fawn Homie. Shout out to Fawn Homie. We Peace to Fawn Homie. Lab Hour, uh, the, first, the first show here in the District of Cannabis uh, that put this culture on the map uh, early on. We all used to come here on Sunday night. Uh, this is before any of the pop-ups, uh, before uh, any of that. We used to come just to share uh, information and knowledge because uh, 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 we are a bunch of unique characters here uh, in uh, the District of Cannabis. Uh, so um, I don't know what what you want me to so, talk about, man. I this mean, is what this is. Um, know, my perspective is a little different than than most people's facts in here. Facts only. So, um, this is well this. Yeah, he 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 know. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. So um, so this is what we we call in this segment. Say it loud. So right now, what we speaking on is the recent um, law enforcement crackdown um, within the raids. within the yeah the raids in the DC community, and uh, how we can maybe uh, open up a dialogue if that's even you know I don't know what your perspective it's past is that on point. it. It's past that point. Why why you say that? Open up dialogue with who? With the city? With the council. After you thumb your nose at him? Yes. I think it's never too late for a conversation to begin. Are you, are you incorporated here in the District of Cannabis? That's the question. So there's the question. And that's what these brands and businesses here need to answer. Are you incorporated here in the District of Columbia? If you're not a tax base, it's, not, it's no use to go into the council. They're not listening. So lesson register as a business here in the district of columbia pay your taxes register with dc tax and revenue pay your taxes you, i can give you another scenario that we can rewind back and we can go back to the beginning mm -hmm. I mean, we can rewind back and go back to the beginning and people have done some little bit of listening and you incorporated your business and you uh and you went and paid some taxes and when the raid started you could have went to the city and said, you know what, we are incendiary businesses of I-71 and we've paid a quarter of a million in taxes to you. We need regulation. You can't do that now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, we can go back and do it. Well, it we want to talk about solutions forward because we can't reverse. We can't go back and like redo what has already been the genie out the bag. Um, I and, guess. And those, and those that were able to you know take advantage of the opportunity to register at the right time um they often say luck is where preparation meets opportunity so now cats that may have gotten businesses shut down can go before a judge as a business and discuss their business property it's never too late to start a business no, it's, it's, not. it's it's just all about branding this is, right this is the cannabis business yes if you correct. are not incorporated as a business and you're a vendor in DC. You are no part of no industry. You're not a business. So that's that's let's get that clear. Let's let's incorporate our businesses, our ideas, um, uh, your brand. Uh, a brand is one that produces a product, a service, or a commodity. So you're gonna have to produce a product, a service, or a commodity. Yeah. And um, so as a as a business. Don't you think business leaders can come to the council and get a conversation started as far as how to maybe I can co talk to them. precisely people like you and you specifically should um, not not that I'm trying to tell you what you should and shouldn't do my brother but however I feel like you would be a powerful voice in there because you are passionate and you teach and uh, I think you might be able to teach them something yeah you never know well, if they give me that license for the dispensary, I'll be able to talk to them. That's a different time. That's a different. That's a different. Say it loud. That's a different. Say it loud. At the same time. But that's why. At the that's same why, time. That's why I don't vent. Why should I vent? I'm yeah. not going to vent because that is the redundancy, and it, it was short term. And as a lot of vendors are seeing now, and 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 what's happened is the occupational hazards have happened. I tell you what, if you want to solve something right now, what you can do right now, this moment, everybody that's listening, everybody that's watching, please do this. Take I-71 compliant off everything that you have, off your, off a hashtag, off your 
page, off of everything. There is no such thing as I-71 compliant, and all that means is that you are in the gray. Total, there is no like, you worry about people snitching or people calling, you're calling on yourselves with the I-71 compliant, saying there's no regulation to be compliant. So how are you compliant? Well, by the rules given, we are, you can from what I understand, away. from what I understand, from the rules given, I'm saying we, the collective we, the community, mm -hmm. um, from the rules given, we are operating within those. You there know, isn't that, any. You can, you okay. Can, there, so it's a big nothing. There is not. Look, this is what we need to do. Talk if about you it. want, if if you want some actual like facts Solutions. on what I-71 is, go by Capital Hemp. They're the reason that I-71 exists. And there's a guy in there. His name is Alan. Uh, he owns Capital Hemp. Alan uh, you should pay your homage to him because he's, they're the reasons that all of us are here. They're the reason I'm even here. I even turned the camera around. Peace to Alan Lance. Um, but uh, Alan and, and Adam and, and some other like minds, Alan per, 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 pertaining to the growers portion. That's why I, I, I shout out Alan all the time. But go ask them what I-71 is. They're the architects. And get the definition from them. Don't get the definition from a vendor. Don't get a definition from a, the person that has something to gain from you by keeping you in the dark. Get it from the actual source. I-71 compliance. Where is the regulation written in order to be compliant? California has compliance. Other states have compliance. Let me give you something. I'm gonna give you all something right now. That, 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 that bag, Says I-71 compliant. Canalon, you can print anything on that bag. Anything. And Canalon printed a nice I-71 compliant that looks like California, and looks like Denver, Colorado, looks like Washington, looks like everybody else's real compliance. But it's not. It's like, take that. If you want to, like, stop the raids or right now, if you want to, like, just do something, as a vendor, take that compliance out of your of your vocabulary and off your off your gram and off your off any social, uh, because they're looking for that. Yeah, it's a it's a bullseye. <laughs> yeah, it's a bullseye. Like boom, boom there please. they are. They're gonna be here today. Fed hot. Also, the DMs, the DMs. DM me the location. <laughs> Come on, like D you DM the police location too. Like, Talk about it. Um, but. Solutions, man. What, what do you think there is one other than complete legalization? What it is is the solution comes November. Vote for y'all that are, are are not part of the political process. Thirteen percent. I think thirteen percent of the uh, DC it's residents they, turned they out in the last. They didn't turn uh, out. They didn't turn out. That's that's just sad. It didn't yeah, turn out uh, for the primary, and now you got whoever as whoever. you're going to be at your elected to go elect, but. Anyways, yeah. what I want to say about November, why it's so important for D.C., Talk is because it. the Harris Rider may expire in November. And this is something that's real keen and, and important, uh, especially for the cannabis community to really understand, is that this Harris Rider is the reason why we cannot have regulation in D.C. Because the Harris Rider restricts D.C. from using any federal funds to put forth a recreational market for cannabis in D.C., that's thanks to Harris over there in, in Maryland who put this little rider in the budget. That rider is to expire November. If that rider expires, that means the city will allow and regulation to open up. Now that there's a question for everybody that's been at the pop-ups and, and, and doing pop-ups and those that are on the city's radar. Do you think they're gonna give you a license? I'm De just it depends just, on the on the business, right? I'm saying that if you wanted to continue on and let's say we'll have a legal pop up, I can legally have a club and I can legally open up. You got to go to DCRA to get your license. Get your you got to actually go through the business process to get a license. Yes. And when the city goes and says, hmm, this brand, because I don't think anybody's going to like try to change their brand. All right. And no, so that's this, what, right, right. Yeah. So this brand here has been associated with XYZ or associated with this raid, that raid, or was wrapped up in that raid. Or, or what about the hearsay? 
the hearsay like right. that that's a problem too but that's like, that's that that's that chit, that chitter chatter we don't get into that we don't get into all that yeah but the city is gonna look at they have a list in 2016 the dispensaries and the growth facilities went to the city and the task force was formulated they said we need to do something about this community it was a list of social media that uh uh man i'll just name names oh Corey went to the went to the city with it all right well it depends on the names Let's, well i'll you know just I mean? say Corey, and for those that yeah, have been yeah, around yeah, long yeah, enough yeah, well yeah. we know who Corey is yeah, yeah, yeah. Corey went to the city with it along with the other dispensary owners and cultivators because so, the city itself you know you think they were promised a lot of cash right a lot hey, of cash hey this is say it loud but let's not say it too loud all right my brother it all. you <laughs> know me I'm, yeah, i got nah, nah, fuck that. say it loud i got do a target it. i got let's target on me let's man. do but it let's talk about like what's really going on here what's really going on is there's a task force that's been formulated it was formulated around this time in 2016. how many people have come around here since 2016. i can look in this room and say everybody except for a few all right so let's just like keep it 100. At they are on it and they are investigating and also want to give you all definitely this and i've told told a few about this throughout the community and i hope that others will share this in 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 september of last year sessions replaced the federal da of the district with its own da and she specializes in rico racketeering and organized crime yeah. facts this is facts you can look her up she's the new head of the federal DA here, okay? And then the media. I want to talk to the media, I wanted to be in the media, and then the media exposing the community. It's not a good look. That actually put more heat on you than, than anything. Because if the media puts it out there, and then national media puts it out there, what's going on here, and they're calling us the wild, wild west, Right? What do you think well, the well, city gonna do? Mm. You, you you don't think other other mayors like hey, what's going on in D.C.? Yo, you ain't got nothing on control over there. Yo, all out. What about the feds? What about the feds that are that are on F Street. Like, and, you know, hey, you know, hey, hey this out. is a wild wild west here. You know, and for real, it's been the wild wild west. Yeah, long time. This, this is, is not a new. This is, this <laughs> this is not a new phenomenon. It was explained that D.C. Wait, you mean DC be wildin'? No, but it, it, was, <laughs> it was explained to me. Some, Wait, hold on, hold on. DC be wildin'? It explained to me okay. for some OGs from the West yeah. that the DC scene and DC what it is, is pre-215 in California when it was kind of the wild, wild West in California before they put some regulation down. And they put that regulation down to bring some order uh, into the chaos that they knew it was going to be created and was created. Now they have something new called 64 that a lot of people ain't happy with. Uh, but it, 215 was written to bring some regulation. And it was explained to me that's where we're at. You want something that isn't here yet. And but it's, the, it's soon come. And, 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 and don't destroy your chances before it's yeah. here. Yeah. Because, you know, for the chump change. Well, I keep saying it's chump change. It's all it's, it's all the pump chump fake. Change. The pump fake. That's what you, you, know, you say in, uh, in New York. You, you fall for the pump fake. You know what I'm saying? You uh, they sprinkling uh, peanuts on the ground, Smoking but mirrors. but they but they sirloin behind that door. The sirloin boy behind that door. And what service though? If you're gonna be a brand, y'all, I mean, if, you, if you're really gonna be a brand, you know, it's it's, it's I have to speak on this. I, I spoke to some people about this. I, I, I spoke to Agent Orange about this the other day, and I, I talked about this. Man, I talked about like brands. What's laughable? What's what's laughable is this. I mean, it really is. It's it's, it's not only laughable. It's like sad. What's you that? would call yourself a brand. When you go out, you've been out west to the to festivals? I know you've been out there. You've been out there? I have not been out west. You ain't been out west to a festival? No. Who been opening a festival in here? You been a festival? Hey, yo, is, is, is Lemon Tree and Golden State Bananas booth? Huh? Is Lemon Tree the brand in Golden State Bananas booth? You just said you went to a festival. But uh, he probably doesn't know every single all right, brand. All right, no, like, all right, let, let, I just said this. No, the he, brands bro, that you just, see, you know what I'm saying? right? The he brands that you see, there, you there is no, no other brand is in their booth. It's they're the brand. 
They produce what's in there, oh, right? I see it's what theirs, you're right? Yeah, I see what you're exactly. saying. Exactly. Unless you produce, vertical, it's laughable. They call unless, that vertical integration. It's just like vertical integration. Unless we did you, a collab, you grow it. You right? grow it. Fohomi yeah. and DC Scrogger do a collab, and then yeah. it would be Fohomi and DC Scrogger in it, in it, right? Yeah. Right. It, it, otherwise, yeah. it would be Fohomi and DC Scrogger, Word. right? Yeah. Well, Thanks. like these brands that I'm trying to say is that you're not a brand. You're like a merchant. That has a hmm. whole bunch of other brands that's that's shuttling wares. On the table. That's, that's, uh, that's and Walmart's gonna open up if 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 the rider expires. And they're gonna have. Do you want to be a brand that Walmart wants, or you're gonna have to be Walmart yourself? And that means self sufficiency. Vertical integration. That's what the, that's what they call in the MBA schools. You know. And Wharton and all that kind of stuff, which uh, that's a genius level. What I'm trying to say is this is a genius level um, discussion that you you're witnessing, and uh, you know this is the type of thing that the cannabis community brings together. Conversations like this, you know, which wouldn't would, wouldn't be had for real um, when we're we're talking about um, building businesses, okay? Building businesses from cannabis. Um, we're scratching know. surfaces, y'all. We're scratching surfaces and everybody in this room and everybody listening has a chance in Canada right now. Federal legalization, I, I, the reason I came up, I was gonna come up, but I saw you reading about these bills. Yo, check it, man. I saw those bills with my own eyes, meaning before. I'm telling you, federal legalization is a lot closer than you guys think. And it's, it's like right around the corner. They make your way, right? If you're not entrenched with your idea, and what's, what's sad is like, Everybody in this room is unique and has a unique skill. Facts. Right? But the 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 monkey see, monkey do has everybody doing kind of the similar, the same. When you need to look at like what you like, incorporate canna. And then it's not a job. Like, Precisely. It's it's like everything cannabis and hemp can be. It's not a it's not a can it's not a cannabis business. It's a cannabis business. You know what I mean? So, um, yo, we gotta DC Scrogger, it's always a pleasure, man. We gotta yeah, wrap it yeah, up. This yeah. is this is a uh this is everything I hoped that the first say it loud would be. Um this is gonna be a, a, a regular installment of the slab hour. Um probably do this monthly, just have you know, get the community together and really talk about um the blueprint. And I think that's what brothers like Scrogger have been laying down since the beginning. Brothers like Phone Homie have been laying down since the beginning. Um, there are a lot of other brands out there and um, different uh, events and um, businesses have been doing it the, uh, the not the right way because we don't, you know, there is no right way. Just like you said. Man, look, <laughs> you know what I mean? So they've been doing it the way. <laughs> they've been doing <laughs> it the way. The best way that you know we can. Just using, regular, using the force. Using the force with Chewbacca Mom. at our side. Word up. So we're going to close this. Uh, thank you. No doubt, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate you, fun homie, man. You be safe. You be blessed out there, man. Slab hour, man. Hell yeah, yeah. DC Scrogger. Yeah. Um, it's always, it's always an adventure. Every time I have a conversation with that brother, man. But um, anyway, thank you for uh joining us again. Uh, you know, you got one week to catch up. Got one week to catch up. We'll be back here next Sunday from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. You don't know. You don't know. Yeah, don't know. Hey. DJ Sandman, I appreciate you, my brother. You. Once again, Sorry. every single time, man. This is this is uh this excellent release. Um I hope the community finds some release in these uh say it louds. The slab hour once again coming to you live from Washington, DC. It's your boy DJ A Boogie. Peace to phone, homie. We miss you, homie. Right, Have homie. safe travels out there. All right. <laughs>